Good afternoon everyone! In today's video, I'll show you how to take our new hourly volatility models that we have for stocks and ETFs and use that to deduce down in the market where you're really looking to focus in on in terms of opportunities. Now I'll show you how we go down today from ETFs to figure out what is the driving force behind the markets, which are the ETFs that we want to stay away from, and which are the ETFs where volatility is a little more contained and we have an edge there where we can take advantage of that. Now that's the entire process I'll walk you through, but for all stock members, you can now download these hourly volatility models directly from the indicator page. So this is now live. Come inside of the platform, click indicator right here, input whichever list of symbols you'd like. I've noticed you can push the list to about 100 to 120 symbols, and there's something new here that I'll be doing differently, which I'll talk about in just a second. But once you input that list, click generate indicator and then you can download both the hourly and the daily models both aggressive and conservative now a few housekeeping things first you must leave extended hours turned on when using this indicator two again uh, just a reminder max 100 to 120 symbols per file and this will really depend on your local machine you can try pushing this even further if you think you have a particularly strong machine but thinkorswim will give you errors if it can't handle the file now, one thing, like I said, that we're going to do differently is every Sunday, I'll upload my personal indicator set onto our stock platform. I'll send the instructions to download this in the weekly Sunday email, and this will contain a list of all of the symbols that I'm looking to trade for the upcoming week. And for the most part, they'll remain the same week after week. There are the liquid names, things like the AMDs, your uh, Apples, your Teslas, your Microsofts, uh, your Procter & Gamble's, your ETS, all of those are the ones that I'll be including in this indicator set. So in case you find it easier to just download my set and then maybe download a one-off file throughout the week for anything new you want to download, that's a strategy you can now use as well. And this will include both the hourly and the daily models. So something new that's coming up for all stock members. Now, if you're not a member of the Stock Volatility Box platform already, you can learn more about it on our website. That's tosindicators.com slash volatility hyphen box hyphen stocks. And there you can learn more about the platform. For all Futures Volatility Box members, we do have a 50% discount available for the stock platform. And if you want to take advantage of that discount, just send me an email uh, and I can send you the coupon code for that. All right, with that, let's dive into today's uh, action and start with the ETFs. Now, coming inside of our charts, I think the easiest way to show you which sectors to focus on and which sectors to ignore is by loading in only the uh, hourly conservative. And let me hide the aggressive along with our daily volatility box as well for the time being. Now, with just the conservative, if I cycled through the different sectors, what you should notice are there are sectors in which price stays inside of our volatility box, something like XLP, something like XLE, but if you come into something like XLF, price action very clearly breaks outside of it. Once we break outside of the conservative, that's our clear cut sign that, hey, financial is not really a place we're looking to participate in. There's better markets where we have an edge. So for us today, the markets where we had a nice edge included something like XLV. So using our conservative box, you can see how price action is very much just inside of our clouds. Now let me show you what happens when I layer on our aggressive volatility box as well. Once I layer in the aggressive, there was one trade setup in that 8 to 9 a.m. Pacific hour. And this is that same time when, if you remember, on the other sector, something like XLF, price action is going outside of the clouds here. If we compare that to something like XLK, the tech sector, very same idea going outside of the conservative volatility box there as well. XLY, same idea. XLC, same idea. So there's all of these different sectors in which price action is breaking even outside of its conservative volatility box. Meanwhile, that same hour, 8 to 9 a.m. Pacific, the healthcare sector, XLV, the sell-off in that is so minimal that we're just hitting the aggressive volatility box. And even then, we're hitting it, we're getting our edge signal confirmations, you're bouncing at the cyan line before then bouncing away from our volatility box clouds. So that gives you an idea of the level of strength in XLV, relative strength, compared to something like the financial sector, which broke outside of even the conservative models. Similarly, we had XLU, 
Now, XLU was a little bit more interesting because it also hit our live scanner today. If I come inside of our live scanner here, let me search for XLU. We had XLU hit the live scanner when it breached the aggressive lung, and there were some top holdings of XLU that also hit the live scanner as well. But if we take a look at this on our charts here, first, let me show you just with the hourly models before loading in the daily here. So I'll hit apply. Now using just the hourly models, we hit first the aggressive model. This is that same 8 to 9 a.m. sell-off. We break below the hourly aggressive, so we break outside of that. This was a failed trade setup because you did have the confirmation along with better entries. Then we come down to the conservative box, this time breaching that line as well. One more edge signal, and the conservative is the model this time that's respected that you then have this bounce from. Now the reason I thought this was particularly interesting is take a look at where that conservative comes in. That conservative came in at right around that $70 price point. Now let me add in our aggressive uh, daily volatility box model as well, so I'll hit show study. And this is what appeared on the live scanner. It appears right here when price action hits our volatility clouds. And to make that a little clearer, let me hide the other two studies here. So this should hopefully make that a little bit more clear. How those two models overlapped helped you find really this zone, this region. This was the overall idea where the hourly and the conservative uh, both overlapped. Excuse me, the daily and the conservative models overlapped. Near that 70 along with what, all the way down to 69.84 price point before you have that little bounce inside of XLU. Now the way this gets a little bit more interesting is when you dive deeper into each of these ETFs that are showing you relative strength when other ETFs, for example, are not. So, for example, going back to XLV here, that same time period when you have that 8 to 9 Pacific hour, you may be looking, well, what inside of XLV is actually selling off where we might have a better entry for a stock. And this allows you maybe a little bit more flexibility, maybe you prefer stock, whatever it is. So if you look at some of those holdings, so J&J &J here, J&J, &J, that 8 to 9 a.m. hour, we're selling off, but we don't even hit the aggressive box. So that's clearly not one of the key driving forces that's uh, driving that sell-off. Pfizer, not it as well. If we come in next, Amgen. Amgen here, 8 to 9 a.m. hour, we are hitting the volatility box, the aggressive box, the same time we are on XLV. So there you have an idea of some overlapping setups for individual stocks versus ETFs. Similar idea here, if we come inside of XLU, which we just talked about, we look at some of the top holdings there. So if we come into Southern Company, Southern Company is hitting the aggressive box right around that same time XLU is hitting the aggressive long on the daily, along with that conservative $70 price point. So that's uh, Southern Company moving on next to something like, say, Duke Energy, 8 to 9. We don't have enough of a sell-off there. So Duke was one where you didn't have just as much of a driving force, not really as much of an opportunity inside of that ETF as some of the other holdings. Again, NEE, 8 to 9 a.m. Pacific hour, here inside of NEE, while the ETF was still maintaining its models, here we broke outside of even the conservative, where the first edge signal comes outside of that. So NEE gets ruled out in terms of not a place you're looking to focus inside of XLU. So hopefully this process is starting to make a little bit more sense. For those looking for maybe one more example, I'll show you XLP, the Consumer Staples ETF, where we had again another breach 8 to 9 a.m. That's where much of the volatility today happened. This happened towards the edge of the hour, where we had price breach, the sign lines, you have the edge signal, and then it did react and bounce from there. And inside of XLP, if you take a look, Procter & Gamble, breached the aggressive, went a little bit further below the clouds before that small bounce, but really not as much strength inside of Procter & Gamble. But you contrast this with Coke, and Coke there hit the aggressive, went below the aggressive as well, hit the conservative before really holding that conservative, and then into the day has a really nice rally breaking above even our opening high price as well. So those are some ideas in terms of using the hourly volatility models to first start with understanding what's going on behind the scenes, especially on a day like today when on the S&P, we've broken even outside of our doomsday conservative models in that same eight to nine hour. So in that hour, when you have this level of volatility in the broader markets, when an ETF like XLV is holding up so well, I think that's your clear cut information in terms of this is your golden ticket. This is the one that's selling off the least 
place where you might have an opportunity when the broader markets are breaking outside of even their most conservative volatility models that we have. So just some ideas there. For stock volatility box members, again, you can download the uh, hourly volatility models for whichever stocks you'd like on the indicator page. And I'll upload my personal list starting this Sunday, which should have a majority of the stocks that I think most folks are looking for. And if it doesn't, you can, of course, generate your own indicator file whenever you'd like from the indicator page. All right. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and we'll see you in the next update.